Greetings, ladies and gents, and welcome to this narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 87 Memory Transcription Subject Glimmer Vendel Rescue Date Standardized Human Time December 1st, 2136 The half-day train journey kick-started my confinement with the human. The more time passed, the less I was convinced that we were in Kledgel Falls to see Aunt Thema. We stopped off as a hotel for rest until the Vendel government brought us a car and a driver. It was clear Noah and our authorities had its beck and call. I was impressed with how well the Gaian could control its instincts and with how thorough its propaganda was. Reading about secret predators within the Federation was jaw-dropping that rattled my worldview to the core. It was lunacy for the Colchians to think flesh-eaters could be tamed. Any credibility the Terrans had gained was in their fault. The human behavior did prove curious, especially rescue footage of the Gurgids. That was negated by the fact that they invaded the cradle. Earth was the aggressor in the conflict. A lackluster excuse about Prime Minister Perry staging an assault with their cover for their warmongering. It was an opportunity to conquer a lesser race and begin an empire. But as a former exterminator, I couldn't say I didn't feel a sliver of doubt. Gaians broke a lot of the rules that I'd known since birth, whether they were lying or not. I hadn't worked up the courage to ask Noah any questions yet. However, there were a lot of answers I wanted to hear. When the beast was forced to cook up spontaneous retorts. Maybe I'm in imminent danger of being devoured, unless we're going to a slaughterhouse. Giving Hazy space, she hasn't been eating or drinking, and I think Sarah visiting would be a trigger. Tava was speaking to Noah through a video call. The human pursed his lips. We should give Hazy as much time as she needs. If she's not even voicing her concerns, she's not ready. Glim is trouble, but at least his mind is still there. Just be careful, Noah. This isn't the capital. It's a rural area where Vindal aren't as open-minded. They don't regularly interact with humans. You are not exactly incognito either. Are you worried about me? A monstrous predator like me can scare off a few fanatics. Please, try not to scare anyone. The footage of you chasing Glim is making the rounds, and let's say, it's a bad look. Human ambassador hunts Vendel cattle in train station. It wasn't like that. Glim could have hurt someone. I had to stop him. I know, Noah. I like to be involved in things myself, but maybe we shouldn't have gotten wrapped up in all of this. We're too high profile to be ordinary helpers. The guy in scowled. It was your idea to sponsor a Vendel in the first place. You said that it was good PR to do our part. And you said that you wanted to. Does it really matter whose fault it is? Governor Tava hissed. No, I just don't want your media team to toss me under the bus. Stars, I hate all of your idioms. Kill two birds with one stone, cut to the chase, stabbed in the back. Aren't there any that aren't about being maimed or killed? One or two. You're infuriating. Well, settle this later. Just be safe, okay? Noah bared its teeth to itself, as the Vandal leader abandoned the call. I studied the guy for a long moment and considered the adoration in Tava's eyes. That emotion looked like love, but I didn't understand how such strong feelings could arise towards a monster. Perhaps I should regard the beast with gendered pronouns, like he was a person. Earth's presence was less nefarious than Riss's dominion, from what I could tell. The empathy tests were convincing, since it was difficult to fool scientists on a neurochemical level. Why had Noah lied to us, though? His actions hadn't been innocuous, conning and misleading us. The Gaian ambassador was ignoring my presence, for now. I was certain he was avoiding direct eye contact. His focus drifted to a sign in the distance, which read, Kalgal Retirement Home. His hand reached for a visor as he pressed it across his paralyzing pupils. I wondered what that accomplished when every Vendel here knew of his predatory identity. Why, why, why do you wear your visor out here? I gasped out. The human palmed his chin. Because these are elderly Vendel. I don't want to give anyone a heart attack. Any Vendel over 65 weren't allowed in the exchange program to avoid cardiac episodes. Thema is how old? I, I don't know how, how many years. She's 74, Glim. You were gone for eleven years. No, that, that's not possible. I'm sorry. I hate to spring this on you, but your aunt's memory is fading. She's in the late stages of dementia. My gaze shifted to the rural landscape, which stretched the horizon opposite the assisted living facility. The family reunion where Thema forgot me hadn't been in my imaginings. I was saddened that I hadn't been there to help and to visit her. Had her mind deteriorated because she was alone. Noah hesitated before moving a hand slowly. 
His fingers hovered over my wrist for several seconds, giving me a chance to pull away. The guy empathetically squeezed my forearm, like a vandal would with their tail. His touch was delicate and frail. It was clear he was leaving the option for me to withdraw, since I knew from the train station that he was much stronger. There were several things I read into the weight of my mind. I couldn't succumb to believing the narrative. The humans were allies with the child-eating Axel, even if they'd used that alignment to liberate Vendel captives. Their current objective was unraveling the Federation, and they were bestial hunters too. Apparently, Terran aggression had been documented by observers prior to first contact. I can't remember learning about them in school, other than vaguely as an extinct predator race, I mused. The internet claims that they've had over 10,000 battles in their history. Hundreds of wars in just a century after the World War. The first one, I whined. How could you ever keep peace? Though it was quiet for several seconds. We have to grow the feck up. Humans want peace, yet we've only ever known competition. It doesn't come naturally, but we're starting to act like a united planet. Then little always at peace. I doubt that. The Colchian gentling took hold and fossil sanitized your past. I think that you used to be a feisty herbivores until they convinced you of your weakness. And if we're not strong? We'll teach you. We'll protect you with the fierceness you've never seen before. Noah's lips curved up and I disassociated myself from the rush of fear. Perhaps the constant snarling betrayed his deceit, since the gesture came off as subconscious. The human rushed to cover his mouth, like he knew he'd done something wrong. If threat displays were intuitive, that explained the full-face masks at the hospital. I recalled how the oxer would snarl just looking at us, licking their lips with appetite. Sapien predators used their teeth to assert dominance on conversation too. From what I could tell, the guards would flash fangs when contesting a particular catch or boasting of their hunts. The Gaians possessed the same urges. The Vendel driver parked the car outside the nursing home, and Noah opened the door. I felt paralyzed, befuddled by the paradoxical humans. It wasn't clear what to think of them. Their motives were ambiguous, and their mannerisms flipped between hostility and sympathy on a dime. Smiling or snarling, as you say, it's a submissive gesture in primates. I understand it is not so for other animals. Noah sighed. I coaxed myself out of the car. N Nonsense! How can teeth be be, be, be friendly? It's about their positions. Teeth apart, jaw tension, and lips curled back. That's actual hostility. But teeth together and lips relax shows that we're not about to attack. S so you're saying that you don't want to bite? Our predators need to communicate that constantly. The Gaian's ambassador nodded. Exactly. Vindal don't understand the subtle differences. The few that try to replicate it usually just look constipated, man. I chuckled in spite of myself. You have these answers while, while rehearsed. I'm used to explaining everything that we do. If I'd explained us better in my speech, a billion people wouldn't have died. Since then, I sifted through our evolution pretty thoroughly. Noah's voice turned scratchy, and his ensuing cough sounded a bit congested. Did the guy consider himself responsible for the extermination attempt? He'd stated Earth's case pretty well. For five minutes broken up by hecklers, guns had been trained on him the whole time too. A non predator would have frozen in fear. The fact that it gave anyone pause over exterminating warlike horrors is miraculous. Nobody in his position could have done better. The human poured at his nose before opening the door to the lobby. He gagged at once and muttered something about disinfectant smell. The middle-aged Vendel sat at the reception desk, staring at our appearance. Her eyes went wide with fear and her ears pinned back. She snapped out of it enough to tap notice on her tail. A sign was tapped to the desk reading, no humans permitted in several scripts. The guy crossed his arms and leaned back with an intimidating frown. I observed the tightness of his jaw and the slant of his eyebrows. This was genuine hostility. It was worryingly easy to decipher the predator's mouth contortions once told what to look for. No aside. Seaglum, still think we run the show here? I don't know. You put up with a lot. You, what? You, you, you can't be here. The Vendel receptionist stammered. You need to leave this, this human anyway. The guy lifted his visor. I think you'll make an exception for this Terran ambassador. I have powerful friends. There's security footage. Are you go going to attack us to get through? You're trespassing. Glum wants to visit his aunt Thieber. Make that happen and we'll leave. No, you're not welcome here, Noah. 
The veins in the giant's neck bulged, and his fingers clenched tighter. His lips curled back as his pink gums, while his eyes dilated. So that's what a primate's aggressive snarl looked like. I skidded back, remembering Noah's warning about intent to bite. I didn't want to be within snacking distance. My inner exterminator agreed that humans shouldn't be prowling our streets and wished for their non-existence. But my sentimental side remembered Noah tucking me in and playing games with Hasey and I. If the predator was emulating empathy, he deserved an award. There was more to this conqueror than my arcs or tormentors. The vendor receptionist wasn't backing down from her statement and was gaining more confidence by the second. She bared her own teeth, reaching for a phone. Perhaps this employee intended to dial exterminators. I was increasingly worried about the guy inviting this individual. Don't talk to Noah like that, a Zerulean nurse trotted into the room and glared at the receptionist. Please forgive Carl Lever. She doesn't think highly of your kind. Those flesh beasts drain our resources and our taxes go to their meat factories. They set up their encampments anywhere and litter our big cities. Some of them don't even work, the vandal snapped back. Earth got bombed to oblivion. Those humans lost family members and everything they own. Wouldn't you be grieving too? The quadruped flicked her ears and Carl Lever slunk off with a look of loathing. The Zerillian nurse shook her head before approaching Noah with cautious steps. The guy refitted his visor and clasped his hands behind his back. He dipped his head, perhaps to show appreciation. Please listen, Ambassador Noah. I can't allow you to interact with our patients, the nurse said. Noah hissed in exasperation. What? I thought you were on my side. I am. Many of our residents have memory problems and wouldn't know what a human is. A scare of that advanced age could be deadly. You don't want to kill someone, do you? Of course not. But Glim's been an ox or captive for a decade. He needs to see his aunt Thema. Why don't I take Glim to her room and you wait here? Then you leave after without any unwanted incidents. The predator paced for a few seconds, startling the Zerillian. Even with the visor on, I could sense these unnatural eyes on me. Noah was considering whether I'd run off at the first opportunity, which was a high possibility. He must be feigning deliberation to seem reasonable. Why would he let me out of his sight? The human went to great lengths to track me, I escape, and hunted me in public venue. He wouldn't release his catch. Okay, thanks for helping us, nurse. The guy and sat in a chair, which was comically small for him. I trust you, Glim. The question is if you trust me. I withheld my disbelieving hiss and tried to make sense of my sudden release. Of course, I didn't trust a predator, after years as a cattle captive. Besides, his introduction started with deceit, which eliminated any chance of mutual trust. Conceding all information about his kind didn't inspire positive thoughts. Noah had done an admirable job of swaying me when I scorned any nuance originally, but our first encounter proved that he was a trickster. I followed the Zerillion down the hallway and relaxed as the guy didn't follow us. This was a pristine opportunity to escape captivity. I could evade detection better with a less integrated town. The Zerillion stopped outside at one door and gestured for me to enter. My ears perked up with hope as I crept into the room. Zima wheezed on her side and her facial fur was starkly snow white. The glassiness in her eyes reminded me of the cattle, Venlil. Drool was running down her chin. An old sitcom played on the TV, which she blankly watched. Thema, I whispered. My aunt screeched, Help! There's a strange man in my room! It's me, Glim. I came to visit you. Yeah, no, not Glim. Glim was captured by the Oxal. Yes, that was true for eleven years. The humans traded for me. See the neck brand? Human? What kind of species name is that? The aliens, Thema, the predators. They returned me, your nephew. Lies! Now you want you gone. You are not my Glim. S stop playing. You, you don't recognize my voice. Aunt Thema glowered at me before wailing for assistance. She began unplugging the wires from her arms and a foot and knocked her drinking water from the nightstand. I gaped in horror as the one person who loved me wanted me gone. Tears swelled in my eyes as I rushed out of the room. The Zerillian medic yelled at me to calm down but my feet were moving on their own. I was blind to my direction and my surroundings. The facility was a blur. There was nothing left here on Vendel Prime, not even my family. The world had changed too much in the process. All I wanted was for Thema to hold me and whisper that it was all right. My paws wrapped around something warm and clung on for dear life. Sobs rattled my body, so I pressed my face into the synthetic fabric. My hugging support tensed beneath my arms, and fleshy appendages tapped my back. I let go with horror as I realized where I'd run to. My instincts went back to the predator, 
for comfort. Noah moustached my neck. Shh. It's okay. You're okay. You don't know what it's like, I screamed. Actually, I do. My dad had Alzheimer's. I'd visit him every weekend, and he didn't remember who I was. He'd tell me about his little boy, Noah, who wanted to be an astronaut, and I would just smile. But I... I need it, Thema. Take me back to the facility. Take me back anywhere but here. I know it's hard, but it's not her fault. Are you sure you want to leave? Please, get me out of here. I can't lose anyone else. That's not Thema anymore. You don't mean that. Sometimes she remembers, and she's there, Glum. Tarva's people got her to record those messages for you. She was glad you're home. The guy picked me up, a stoic expression on his face. My profession had always taught me that predators should be eradicated, but this was the nicest hunter that I'd ever encountered. For some reason, my subconscious felt bonded to Noah. He was a steady presence when everything else was crumbling. I couldn't ignore the evidence from our travels either. The way the Vendela receptionist spoke to my caretaker was irreverent and hostile. Judging from Tarvis' phone call, it sounded like open criticism was allowed on the internet too. Those attitudes wouldn't be allowed to circulate if humans conquered our home. Furthermore, the oblivious Gaians at lunch had been discussing morals and sympathy. They had no way of knowing anyone was listening. With my exposure to the Arxel, I knew how different those pitying attitudes were. The Greys considered keeping us as prey to be our rightful state, and they flaunted it. Glim, can you talk to Hasey? Noah slid back into the car and removed his visor. You can help us explain it to other refugees. Better than we could for you. Tears dripped on my cheeks. I don't know. Maybe? Okay. And do you still want me to drop contact with you when we get back? The guy stiffened, sucking in a sharp breath. It was as if the ambassador was bracing himself for rejection. That implied that it would cause him pain if I answered in the negative. Doe's body language betrayed that he cared what I thought of him. The torrent of fear since first contact seemed to have taken its toll. I don't think that'll be necessary, I croaked. The human curved his lips. Good. I haven't taught you half of our body language. My gaze darted out the window, and a shudder crept down my spine. I, of all Vendel, shouldn't be trusting of a lying predator. But I was giving Noah a second chance. Human charisma had swayed my feelings a bit too much. End of chapter. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.